I think that uh, Terra Luna collapse is going to be good for the industry. There's, it's going to accelerate good regulation. Not all regulation is bad regulation. If you go to coin market cap, there's 19,500 cryptos out there, and there's massive confusion. And a shakeout in the industry would be advantageous because the average mere mortal doesn't have time to study 19,500 cryptocurrencies. And there is a bona fide large demand for, uh, for stable coin that's safe and transparent. And it's been difficult for legitimate institutions like Caitlin's Bank to, to issue those stable coins because there's been a regulatory deadlock in DC. Like people know they need to do something, but there was no urgency to do it. And I think now this is front and center at Treasury and in the administration and in Congress. And I expect that whatever kind of clarity was going to come is going to come faster because now there's a, a reason to accelerate the pace. And uh, I mean, some people think like uh, Bitcoin benefits from anarchy or lack of regulation. That's not true. In fact, uh, I think Ken Griffin said this last week, the CEO of Citadel, he said, he said uh, the entire industry deserves, deserves clarity we need to understand what's a security. We need to understand what's a currency. We need to understand what's a commodity. And if uh, the SEC does this or gets together with the CFTC and issues some guidance, tier one firms like his, Citadel, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, they can all start to get involved. And then what we'd like to see is everybody want to play in the industry. Big investors bring money into the industry. And then the banks, you might have seen David Solomon was on CNBC a couple of days ago, and they asked him, do you custody Bitcoin or crypto? And he said, no, no, we can't. Okay, well, there's a little, can you as a bank custody it? Can you not as a bank custody it? When I talk to the CEOs of publicly traded FDIC insured banks, they go, oh, we can't issue stable coin. Our regulator won't let us. So uh, at the point that there's more clarity, I think the banks will get involved, the investors will get involved, lots of people will get involved, and of course the bad actors and uh, malicious scammers will get squeezed out of the industry because not all these things are alike. They are, they are very different. And uh, the general retail population, they don't have a choice between taking a stable coin from a bank or a stable coin from from uh, an organization that, uh, you know, ETFs disclose their holdings every day, right? And how about every week, every month, every year? Right now, 70% of the stable coin in the market, there's no disclosure even in a year of precisely what's backing it. So the mark, and the market wants a trillion dollars worth of this stuff. Everybody wants it. I can't get it. And the banks that could provide it aren't allowed to offer it. And so we're kind of in this kind of deadlock and, if it took the Terra Luna blow up in order to unstick that, I mean, I don't, it's bad for them, but it will ultimately result in, a, in an industry that's more mature and more functional. The, if, uh, if Treasury or someone gives, uh, gives FDIC banks or any kind of chartered bank, a state chartered bank like Caitlin's Bank, they'll be able to issue a stable coin, that'll accelerate the industry. I think if the SEC regulates the crypto exchanges as national securities exchanges, that will actually accelerate corporate adoption. I think if they mandate full and fair disclosure for all the unregistered securities that are trading in the crypto industry, like the Lunas and the Terras just melted down, that'll shake out all of the garbage, that will accelerate a flight to quality. And to Ken Griffin's point, there's just a lot of public institutional investors that they won't touch it because it's like you're slimed by association with the garbage, right? Bitcoin is backed by $20 billion worth of semiconductors and hardware and energy. And then, uh, you know, yo-yo coin number 97 was ginned up in the basement of some dude <laughs> in some place that is located behind a tour node. And you just don't even know who that is. And so if you're, a, if you're a, a mainstream investor, you know, the Charlie Mungers and the Warren Buffetts of the world, they're not going to dig into this. They're just going to read something and they come to a very quick conclusion. And like it or not, people with less knowledge than you have more money than you. And the market is dominated by them. So you want to see more corporate adoption, right? You need the FDIC, the Fed, Treasury, the SEC, CFTC, they all need to move forward. FASB has a big role to play and 
the only the good news here is everything I just named is highly predictable. It will happen. It's just a question of does it happen in six months, 36 months, right? 60 months, right? And you have to decide. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.